Hello, welcome to our newest video presenting the brand new feature Dynamic Thermal Comfort, which has just been introduced into Ambimed Biomed. So before we begin to talk a little bit about what is Dynamic Thermal Comfort and how can we use this as an assessment tool in, in Biomed, let me shortly introduce the data infrastructure we use in this video and also the data structure we have prepared for you so that you can um, experience the same data um, experiments that we do on this tutorial video on your own PC. So um, if you go to our technical um, NVMet homepage, so this is www nv-met.info, not .com, .info. You will probably knew um, there is the download page where you can download a lot of stuff like the recent version, but also the case studies and other example data. And we have added a new section on this download section. And this section is about dynamic comfort by the example of Columbus Circle. So this is a corner in New York City. Um, which we have selected for this example. So a little corner of um, urban setting along Broadway, a little corner of um, Central Park. So quite a, a mix of um, different um, infrastructure types. I will use this example in this tutorial video to show you how can I assess dynamic thermal comfort for this region. So what is dynamic thermal comfort? To answer this question, we have to answer another question, which is pretty easy because we know the answer to that. What is static thermal comfort? Well, actually, static thermal comfort are all these thermal comfort indicators you probably use for a long time, like PET, SET star, UTCI, PMV, or whatever you name them. So they have all little differences in the way they are calculated, but they have all one thing in common. They are stationary. So that means that for every location, for every grid point you do have in your model environment, uh, we assume that a human body, a human person, stands long enough in one location so that an equilibrium is reached between the input, the radiative input, the wind, the, the air temperature at the surface of the body, at the close, so that there is no more changes in skin temperature, there are no more changes in sweat rate, there are no more changes in the core temperature. Well, this is true if you sit or stand long enough in the same location. And this could be about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes in a summer environment, which actually takes for your body to adapt to this situation you're in. And unless you are not stationary, your body still changes with every minute, with every second, your skin gets warmer or colder, depending on where you are. So what we knew as these figures, as these maps, like the one I'm showing you here, for example, for the PET, for a situation at noon at 2 o'clock p.m. So you see there's a clear set of areas which are cold or cool and a set of areas which are pretty warm and hot. But what about people moving in this environment? So you're walking through the environment and you're exposed to a multitude of different microclimates within a short time. Within a few seconds, actually, a few minutes, you walk through windy areas to windstill areas. You walk from sunlit areas to shady areas. And you have all kinds of combination between sun and wind, no wind and no sun, and so on and so on, whatever you can imagine. So as heterogeneous a microclimate in an urban setting is, so heterogeneous are the thermal conditions. And the static indicators just show you a map of this spatial distribution of different microclimates. But these maps do not take the humor perspective what happens to my body if I move through all these different microclimates with a typical walking speed of 1.34 meters or so, I can just walk a, a, a considerable amount of area within 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And when, within this time, my body temperature is constantly changing and suddenly things become much more important for example, if I'm sweating because I'm in an area with no wind and suddenly 
I'm moving to an area with strong winds, I feel very discomfortable, discomfort, because um, all the sweat will evaporate all at once because of the high wind speed suddenly. So this discomfort will probably not be shown in a map, because from the stationary, the static point of view, this area is not necessarily so unpleasant or so uncomfortable, but it may be very uncomfortable for me as a person because I move from a setting where I have sweated a lot and I will not like to have this environment which is windy right now because maybe other people coming from the shade do not mind to have this wind speed. Maybe they like um, the additional wind compared to some other location. So this is what we call the thermal history. So what happened to my body? What happened to me when I walked through the urban environment the last 10, 20, 30 minutes? And this is simulated with these unstationary energy balance models, like a, a, a small scheme here. Just to say we have different components of the body where the skin, of course, is the most important part. This is where our thermal sensors are placed, the warm sensors closer to the skin surface, the cold sensors are a bit deeper in the skin. And these sensors mostly react on temperature changes. So this is what they tell the brain. Oh, it's getting warmer, it's getting cooler. This is pleasant, this is unpleasant. So suddenly some things like, things like changes in the energy balance, changes in my skin temperature, this defines my personal impression of thermal comfort in a sequence of locations I have visited. And the question whether I feel comfortable at a certain location as a moving pedestrian is not only a function of this very location, but it's a function of what have I seen, what have I experienced before, before I entered this location. And does this location actually fit my thermal demands? For example, I want it cooler, I want it warmer, or not. So this is what we call dynamic thermal comfort, so that we make a virtual walk through the model environment as a virtual human. And while we walk through this environment, a biometrology model, actually at the moment exactly the same model which is used for PET, but for PET it's used on a stationary basis. Now we use this model to constantly monitor what's going on at my skin, why do I sweat, what happens to my core temperature. Um, and every second I have the information about my location inside the model area. And every second it is updated as I moved from one location to the other location and the microclimate changes. This biometrology model is updated with the newest information and so can make all the changes the body experienced from warm to cold, from windy to windstorm. So how does this work? I will show you in this video how you can make a virtual walk through your Envimet model. So if you want to work with dynamic thermal comfort, especially if you want to analyze an area in which is really existing like this um, case study from New York City Columbus Circle, you need to have some control points to sh show the agents where they should go and which routes they should take. So the best thing is to insert already some markers, some receptors in your model area when you digitize the area. So for example, if you are in spaces, um, we have the example here from Columbia Circle in spaces. Um, I have already digitized some of the points. So what we can do is, for example, we just can put in an image from, from Google Street Map um, and to um, have some information, where are the important points, like where are the metro entry points, where are the exit points, where are the sites, for example, the, the playground. and what we need to do, what we need to do before we can start a dynamic thermal comfort simulation is to have some, some points to get some orientation. And the way to do it is pretty simple. It's like um, simple, it's like the way you place receptors in the model. As you have may realize in the latest edition of Spaces, um, there were not only receptors available um, as point markers, there were also a new category which is called marker. So what's the difference between a receptor and a marker? 
basically, the marker is just an information point. It's just a point information with a name and a location that is stored in your area input file, but it's not having an impact on the simulation. If you put in a receptor, NVMet will generate different analyses for this receptor location. It will generate time profiles for this receptor location. It will um, analyze a solar input at this receptor location. So there are quite a number of things that are actually simulated. And if you want to go to dynamic thermal comfort and you have a larger area, so this is a medium large area, for example, you can easily have 50 points, 50 control points, 50 side points, um, but you do not want NVMet to generate all this extra meteorologic information for all these single points. So if you just want to have these marker points in the model, just go and choose the marker type and you can just add these things to your model area. So I have already added some, just for an example, I added some, some one more, um, for example, here at the Broadway intersection. So I want to have a um, receptor or a marker here, say the Broadway, just give it a complete name and just place it where I want it to be. Or I can have some other information on um, maybe here on the area of the Central Park corner for example, what else can be interesting here? For we have already digitized the playground location and the different softball fields. And I can maybe add some entry point, entry west, to say this is an entry point for the Central Park area. So these receptors or these markers, so pretty, for our dynamic comfort simulation, this is pretty much the same. It doesn't matter if it's a receptor or if it's a marker. These are stored in the INX file. So once I'm finished with this, I can just save it like I always do. And all the information will then be stored inside the model. And then we can load or we can make a simulation, of course, first, because we need all the NVMet data. And then we can load the complete setting into our dynamic comfort simulation tool inside of Biomet.